Keeping Cool by Mary Ann Mitchell, art by Beth Spiegel. One hot day, Gabe and Nico set up a lemonade stand. Nico's little brother, Isaac, played nearby with his truck. After a while, Isaac said, I'm hot. Gabe poured Isaac a glass of cool lemonade. Drink this, he said. You'll feel better. Isaac drank it all. Nico asked, do you feel better? But Isaac was still hot. He said, I'm still hot. I have an idea, said Gabe, pointing to a tree. Gabe and Nico moved the lemonade stand and Isaac joined them under the tree. Nico asked, do you feel better? Isaac shook his head. I'm still hot. Isaac looked across the yard and saw the sprinkler. He ran over and pulled it closer to the lemonade stand. Then he ran into the sprinkler saying, now I feel better. What a great idea, cried Gabe. Soon, all three boys were running in and out of the cool water. I Can Jump by Karen Steiner. Art by John Hoven. Caterpillar crawled slowly along the ground. She bumped into Grasshopper. Grasshopper turned to Caterpillar and said, Hey there, Caterpillar. Watch what I can do. I can jump right over you. And Grasshopper jumped over Caterpillar, landing near Frog. Frog turned to Grasshopper and said, Hey there, Grasshopper. You can jump high, but watch what I can do. I can jump right over you. And Frog jumped over Grasshopper, landing near Rabbit. Rabbit turned to Frog and said, Hey there, Frog. You can jump high, but watch what I can do. I can jump right over you. And Rabbit jumped over Frog, landing near Kangaroo. Kangaroo turned to Rabbit and said, Hey there, Rabbit. You can jump high, but watch what I can do. I can jump right over you. And Kangaroo jumped over Rabbit, landing near Butterfly. Butterfly turned to Kangaroo and said, Hey there, Kangaroo. I once was a caterpillar who couldn't jump at all. But now I'm a butterfly and I can fly right over you. And over kangaroo, rabbit, frog, grasshopper, and caterpillar, butterfly flew. The Legend of the Evergreens, a Korean folktale by Bonnie Highsmith-Taylor, art by Alexandra Ball. Winter was coming. It was time for the birds to fly south. But one bird had hurt his wing and he couldn't fly with the other birds. He hopped onto a low limb of a maple tree, but the tree cried, go away, little bird. It's time for my winter nap. So the bird hopped to an alder tree, but the tree said, You can't stay here. I'm ready to sleep. Next, the bird hopped to a birch tree, but the tree cried, Not here, little bird. Little bird, called a fir tree. Come, you can snuggle in my low limbs. And I will spread my branches to keep out the wind. 
said a nearby pine. And you can eat my berries, said a holly tree. At midnight, Old Frost said, North wind, it's time to start winter. I will blow the leaves from the trees, said North wind. But what of the trees that are caring for the small bird, asked Old Frost. They have been so kind, said North wind. They may keep their leaves always, even in winter. And that is why trees that keep their leaves in winter are called evergreens. Robin's Best Nest by Susan Zeller Smith. Art by Jennifer A. Bell. It was spring and Robin needed a new nest. So she gathered dry grass and fluffed it into the shape of a bowl. Then she carried some mud in her beak and patted it into the grass. While she waited for the mud to dry, she visited some friends. Hello, Eagle, she said. I made a new nest. Is it as big as mine? asked Eagle. No. It's not big, it's small, said Robin. Next, she visited Hummingbird. Hello, Hummingbird, she said. I made a new nest. Is it as soft as mine? asked Hummingbird. No, it's not as soft, said Robin quietly. Before heading home, she stopped to talk with Owl. Hello, Owl, she said. I made a new nest. Is it dark like mine? Asked Owl. No, it's not dark, said Robin sadly. As Robin flew back to her nest, she said, I wonder if my nest is good enough. When she got home, she settled into her nest and said, My nest doesn't need to be as big as eagles. She poked a sweet-smelling pine needle into the grassy side of her nest and said, My nest doesn't have to be as soft as hummingbirds. Then Robin perched on the edge and fluffed her feathers in the warm sun. And it doesn't have to be as dark as owls. My nest is the best nest for me. Hop, hop, hopscotch. By Marianne Mitchell. Art by Tracy Bishop. Marco picked two colors from his chalk box. With the blue chalk, he made hopscotch squares on the sidewalk. With the red chalk, he drew numbers in each square. He counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next, he looked for a small stone. He couldn't find one, but he did see a small stick. Marco tossed the stick onto the first square. He jumped over it and hopped all the way to eight and back to one. Anna and her dog, Rico, stopped to watch Marco play. She asked, can I play? Marco said, yes. But when Anna tossed the stick, Rico grabbed it and ran away. Anna cried, Rico, you can't play. She held out her hand and Rico dropped the stick. Anna and Marco kept taking turns while Rico watched. Finally, Marco tossed the stick to the last number. He hopped on the squares, 
picked up the stick and hopped back to one. Anna clapped her hands and said, You win! You win, Rico, said Marco, tossing the stick for Rico to fetch. Itty Bitty Kitty Sings by Joy Cowley Art by Wendy Rasmussen Itty Bitty Kitty was small, but she had a big voice. When the other kittens sang, Meow, meow, meow. Itty Bitty Kitty sang, Meow! The other kittens shut their eyes and put their paws over their ears. Too loud! Too loud! They cried. Itty Bitty Kitty, you sing too loud! Itty Bitty Kitty ran away crying. Miss Tabby ran after her. Dear Itty Bitty Kitty, said Miss Tabby, you have a big, beautiful voice. It is so big and beautiful, it wants to sing on its own. For the concert, you can sing the chorus, and the others will sing the verses. When their parents came for the school concert, the other kittens sang the verses. Meow, meow, meow. And Itty Bitty Kitty sang the chorus by herself. Meow, meow, meow. Perfect, said Miss Tabby. Itty Bitty Kitty, you are a star. My best friend by Nancy K. Wallace. Art by Manya Stojic. When everyone goes off to school and I am still at home, I have a very special friend. I never play alone. He plays at hide and seek with me. We look at books together. He shares the cookies on my plate and likes all kinds of weather. When Dad rakes leaves into a pile, I laugh and we jump in. We chase each other in the yard and race against the wind. He sleeps beside me when I nap. We often play pretend. He may look like a dog to you, but Sam is my best friend. How do you grow? By Marsha Diane Arnold. Art by Bernard Oberdyke. Little duck, little duck, how do you grow? With wiggles and waddles, and time for duck dawdles. With splashes and splishes, and dragonfly wishes and a downy, warm nest by the lilies. Little fox, little fox, how do you grow? By leaps and by bounds, and mother earth sounds, by quiet white snowflakes, and nuzzles at daybreak, and a soft, secret den in the meadow. Little child, little child, how do you grow? With swinging and swaying and all day long playing. With jump ropes and mud pies and bear hugs at sunrise. And a story or three before bedtime. I Smell Rain by Gay Camber Seltzer Art by Alessandra Simatoribus. It was morning in the desert. I smell rain, said Mother Rabbit. Jack Rabbit said, I don't see any clouds. The sky is blue. Jack Rabbit hopped out from under the bush to some sagebrush. Sssss, hissed Snake. 
go home. I smell rain. But Jack Rabbit just shook his tail and hopped away. Horned Lizard was scooting under a rock. Go home, he said. I smell rain. But Jack Rabbit just shook his tail and hopped away. Chirp, chirp. Quail rushed by, kicking up sand. Go home, chirped Quail. I smell rain. Jack Rabbit looked at the sky. Black clouds covered the sun. The wind howled. Lightning flashed. Thunder cracked. And then he smelled it. Jack Rabbit ran. He scattered the sand, hopped over rocks, ran through the sagebrush, and slid back under the bush. Why are you home so early? Asked Mother Rabbit. I could smell the rain, said Jack Rabbit. Peacock and Crow, a folk tale from Thailand, by Lana Crumwitty, art by Uma Krishnaswamy. Long ago, when the world was new, all birds had white feathers. One day, Peacock got tired of his plain white feathers. Will you paint my feathers? Peacock asked his friend Crow. Gladly, said Crow. And then you can paint mine. Crow painted and painted. He began to get hungry, but Peacock wanted more colors. Crow kept painting. His stomach was grumbling, but now Peacock wanted spots. At last, Peacock was happy. He strutted to show off his fancy feathers. Now I'll paint you, he told Crow. Hold still. Crow grabbed a pot of black paint and said, "Just use this, and please hurry. I'm so hungry." Peacock quickly splashed black paint all over Crow, and Crow flew off to find his dinner. To this day, all crows have black feathers, and all peacocks have colorful feathers. Peacock. Still likes to show off, and Crow is always looking for another meal. Hummingbird and Heron by Lana Crumwitty, art by Alexandra Ball. Each day, Heron strolled into the river to fish. Hummingbird liked to fish at the river too, but the fish were becoming harder to find. There are not enough fish for both of us," said Heron. "One of us should find something else to eat. Why don't we settle this with a race?" said Hummingbird, who could fly very fast. "Okay," said Heron. "We'll race to the old dead tree. The winner will eat fish from the river. The loser." We'll have to eat something else. When the race began, Heron plodded forward with his big, heavy wings. Flap, flappity, flop. Hummingbird flew quickly, darting here and there. Zip, zing, zoom. All that zipping and zinging made Hummingbird tired. So he decided to take a nap. There was plenty of time. Heron was far behind. But when Hummingbird woke up, he saw Heron up ahead. He zoomed toward the dead tree, but he was too late. Heron had reached the dead tree first, and so that is why Heron eats fish from the river. And hummingbird sips nectar from flowers. Polka Dot Parade by 
Michael J. Rosen. Art by Roz Fulcher. Bumblebees on lawns of clover. Look, the bird baths spilling over. The watermelon's seedy grin. The juicy drops drip down your chin. Fresh, sweet corn and just plucked berries. Sunflower blooms and sun-warmed cherries. Picnic ants and ladybugs speckles. Sprinklers, sparklers, stars, and freckles. The dandelion's glowing yellows. A branch with toasty warm marshmallows. In lemonade, the ice cubes tinkle. Twilight fireflies first twinkle. In daybright sun and dappled shade, summer's a polka dot parade. Isabella Reads to Muffy by Marianne Mitchell. Art by Catherine Mitter. One day, Isabella saw a dog in the library. Look, there's a dog, she said. Yes, said the librarian. Muffy is our library dog. Children read to her. Isabella looked sad. I can't read. Even if you're not reading yet, you can show Muffy the pictures, said the librarian. So Dad helped Isabella look for a book. Isabella found one she liked. Look, it's a book about animals. Then they went back to see Muffy. Muffy sat. Isabella sat. Muffy sniffed the book. And then Isabella showed Muffy the first picture. Look, it's a dog. Isabella turned the page and said, Look, it's a cat. Each time Isabella showed Muffy a picture, the dog thumped her tail. When it was time to go, Isabella waved goodbye to Muffy. Did you like reading your book to Muffy? Asked the librarian. Isabella grinned. Yes! Kitten Garden by Joy Cowley. Art by Wendy Rasmussen. Miss Tabby, the kitten garden teacher, said, Kittens, tell me what we do on each day of the week. That's easy, Miss Tabby, said Ginger Paws. On fun day, we go to kitten garden. On Tuesday, we chew kitty cookies, said Itty Bitty Kitty. On Whisker Day, we clean our whiskers, said Midnight. On Thursday, we wash our fur, said Little Miss Kitty. On Friday, we fry little fish, said Big Tom. On Snacker Day, we snack on treats, said Little Miss Calico. The last day is Sunshine Day, said the kittens. And what do we do on Sunshine Day, Miss Tabby asked. We play, cried all the kittens. We play in the sun all day. Nosy Rosie's Neighborhood by Nancy White Carlstrom Art by John Nez Nosy Rosie sniffs her way through the neighborhood. She smells freshly baked pita bread at Alibaba's bakery and beef tamales at Milena's taco shop. Nosy Rosie smells fresh blue paint on the clean clothes laundry sign. And she smells coffee at Ellen's Cafe on the corner. 
Now what's that delicious smell? It's Hisako's Noodle Shop. She leaves Main Street behind and comes to Mr. Toodle's house. He must be baking snickerdoodles. What a busy morning Nosy Rosie has had, sniffing her way through the neighborhood. She is tired. She is slowing down. She is home. And that's the best smell of all. I Like Cats by S. Diane Moritz. Art by Jacqueline East. Big cats, small cats, short cats, tall cats. I like cats. Happy cats, sad cats, good cats, bad cats. I like cats. Quiet cats, loud cats, shy cats, proud cats. I like cats. Fat cats, thin cats. Outdoor or in cats. I like cats. Few cats. Many cats. All cats. Any cats. I like cats. Omar's Favorite by Marianne Mitchell. Art by Erica Labar. One morning, Omar and his mom went to the petting zoo. A woolly sheep waddled over. Do you like the sheep? asked mom. Yes, said Omar. He's so soft. Omar carefully picked up a rabbit. Do you like the rabbit? asked mom. Yes, said Omar. He's cuddly. A goat scampered down a pile of logs. Do you like the goat? asked mom. Yes, said Omar. He's funny. A small horse wandered over. Do you like the horse? asked mom. Yes, said Omar. He's very friendly. On the way home, Mom asked, which animal is your favorite? Omar thought and thought. I like my cat, he said. He's soft and cuddly. He's funny and friendly. And he's mine. Off to the Beach by Mary Ann Mitchell Art by Estelle Cork We're going to the beach, said Dad, handing Jackson a bag. You can pack some things to take along. Jackson looked in his toy box and said, I want my toys. He put a pail, a shovel, and a ball in the bag. Next, Jackson added his beach rock collection to the bag. He said, I want my rocks. There was still room, so Jackson added books about birds and fish, saying, I want my books. Then, Jackson skipped into the bathroom to get his favorite rubber ducky from the tub. I want my ducky. When Jackson tried to lift the heavy bag, he said, How heavy? Dad shook his head. You'll have to take something out. So Jackson took out the duck and said, All set. Tell you what, 
said Dad with a smile. If you'll carry these towels for me, I'll carry the bag for you. All right, said Jackson. And off they went to the beach. <laughs>